In this episode, Formula One wraps up the 2022 season at Abu Dhabi. Just how dominant was Red Bull this year? And Meyer Shank Racing finalizes their driver lineup. Welcome to episode 141 of the We Are Auto Show. What's up, Derek? Mr. Michael Rowell, do you like my shirt? I do quite a lot. You have a shirt that says, The Nürburgring. Yes. I've had this shirt for a while. I don't wear it as often as I should. Uh, and also, no one really knows what it is when I do. <laughs> if you know, you know. Mm-hmm. But if there's a lot of people that don't know. Indeed. Did you wear it for all your calls at work today? I did. And How'd that go? No one said a thing. I don't really expect anyone at work to. Though I work in the automotive industry, I work in more digital marketing than automotive. So they're not really into racing and racetracks and German racetracks that are nicknamed the Green Hell. It's not really their MO. They're they're into things that print green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see I that see. transition. I see what you did there. Yeah. I see. That was good. Well, speaking of things that print green, how about Formula One? Because sure. that prints a shit ton of green. I believe they had the last race of the season. Yes, they did, which was irrelevant. So we were looking to see who is the first loser. I think there was a battle in the championship for second in the constructors and maybe second overall. Co- correct, yes. Yeah, so who yeah. is the first loser? The winner's yes. already been decided, but who is the, the first loser of the series, of the All season? Right. Well... Let's talk about this F1 uh, Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Uh, let's start with the fact that it wasn't very exciting. No. Did you watch it? Yes. I surprisingly did get to watch it. Uh, it and by the way, I did watch it with internet sleuth skills. Ooh. Yeah. What'd you do? I found a stream on Reddit. Hey. And I've never really used Reddit before because I'm a dinosaur. The Reddit boys are a mixed bag. Some of them, very wild. Most of the motorsports community and like the streaming community, pretty awesome. Yeah, my ESPN wasn't working. So I was like, okay, well, I really want to watch this. So I, I pulled a Derek and mm-hmm. went deep into the depths of the internet. <laughs> so you Googled F1 Reddit stream. <laughs> I think that's actually verbatim what I Googled. <laughs> yes, and it's the first result. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, but yes, so I did get to watch. Uh, I got to watch a race that was Max Verstappen pulling away and just dr- dr- going on a Sunday drive. There was no no care in the world from him, that race. Yeah, I know Mick Schumacher and Latifi got tangled briefly, but that was irrelevant because Latifi's gone and Schumacher's gone now. Yep. Uh, there was, let's see. The battle was between Charles Leclerc with Ferrari Mm -hmm. and Checo Perez or Sergio Perez with Red Bull. The battle was for the first loser, the second place, the first runner-up against Max Verstappen. And, uh, well, it was kind of odd. This was set up from the previous race where Mm -hmm. Verstappen did not allow Perez to pass which meant in the championship, I think Perez actually had to pass Leclerc in order to get the second place finish. Actually, what happened was if Verstappen would have let Perez pass in Brazil, then Perez would have actually been two points ahead of uh, Leclerc. Leclerc. But they ended Brazil dead even on points. Okay. So whoever finished forward of those two in this race won. Mm Mm-hmm. And there was a battle until the last lap, which was somewhat entertaining. Well, was it, though? Because Charles Leclerc was on older hard tires. Mm -hmm. Perez was on younger hard tires. So we know the hards are good for, like, ever, right? The the longest wear, yes. So they were predicting that Leclerc's tires were going to wear off. And that Perez was going to come roaring up behind him. Sure, he was gaining on him, but not nearly enough. He had, at one point, like seven or eight laps left to make up like eight second gap. Yeah. He'd have to be making up a second a lap. It was a second to a second and a half a lap. That's like a monumental. 
It is, but he's in a Red Bull. Yeah, but the Ferrari has been quick when it's been working. Right. Or when the strategy is not boned, which it wasn't. Ferrari did get one thing right for like the third time all year on the last race of the year. I saw a fantastic post on Reddit uh-huh. where the people said Ferrari effed the strategy up in this race so bad it worked for them. <laughs> <laughs> so that reminds me of in hockey, we have a player locally for our Tampa Lightning called uh, Nikita Kucherov. Mm-hmm. The Kucherov no move move. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. they basically did what you're talking about. They they didn't know what to do, scrambled so much that it worked, <laughs> which is ridiculous. And it worked. It's kind of sad, actually. Yeah. But yeah, Perez, there was no way he was... I mean... <sighs> if there was one more lap, he passes him. I don't think he would have passed him. I think so. I think he would have been neck and neck, but I don't think he would have passed him. I, d- I don't think he had... I don't think he had the pace to truly pass him. We'll never know. Um, but if there was one more lap, it would have been actually exciting. Because there would have been some shenanigans happening. Turns out that Leclerc won by two seconds, once one point five seconds, something like that, uh, yeah. at the end of the race, where it wasn't close enough to really have any impact. Um, and Ferrari did take second. Did they take test second in the constructors as well? Uh, Don't I know off the top of my head. So well, I know that you. they I were. Can tell you, I know that they were in a battle with Mercedes. Yes, they did. And for the first time this year. Uh, Mr. Lewis Hamilton had a mechanical failure in a DNF. Oh, that means he has not won a race all year. He did not win a single race all year, so which is wild. We've talked about this before, but hypothetically, at the end of last season, beginning of this season, if I would have told you that Lewis Hamilton is going to go through the entire year next year and not win a single race, what would you have thought? I would have bet you like five grand on it. I was that sure. Oh, 100%. Me too. I, it, it, everyone would have thought, well, at least he's going to win one. Mm-hmm. Like, even if the car is shit, he's going to get a stroke of luck at some point. Nope. No. Lewis Hamilton finished the entire season without winning a single race. Not only did he not win a single race, his teammate finished ahead of him in the driver standings. And won a race. And won a race. Yes. Wow. What a year to be a Lewis Hamilton fan. Wow. Because that was rough. Going back to the constructors' standings, uh, you mentioned who came in second was Ferrari. Okay. As a little uh, little FYI, in terms of points, Red Bull took the win with 759. We knew that was going to be a few races ago. Then Ferrari took second, 554. Mercedes was third, 515. And then Alpine was fourth, with a whopping 173. Oh, it drops <laughs> off quick. That's like a all 350 plus point difference. It's a cliff. Sheesh. Yeah. And actually, it's a 200 point difference between first and second. Oh, boy. A bit of a runaway this yeah. year, I would say. Uh, yeah. So just so that we all know, driver standings, who finished the season where... Uh, Max Verstappen obviously took the win, 454 points. Uh, Leclerc did come in second with 308 points. Perez came in third with 305. Ooh. So if Perez would have gotten more points in Brazil, that would have been way closer. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and then George Russell at 275, and then Carlos Sainz at 246, and then Lewis Hamilton at 240. So Hamilton was all the way down in sixth place? (laughs) Wow. So Again, if I would have told you that Hamilton wasn't even going to finish in the top five of the the driver standings, I'd I'd, have thought thought you'd be out of your mind. Yeah, I would not believe you. Like, are you high? What? I would not believe you. That's ridiculous. It's crazy. That's crazy. It, it's absolutely nuts. So real quick, let me give you some uh, results from the Abu Dhabi GP because I don't think we actually covered the results. Uh, as we know, Max Verstappen took the win by Miles Leclerc, took second. Uh, Sergio Perez took third. Carlos Sainz, so Red Bull, Ferrari, Red Bull, Ferrari. Uh, then we have George Russell in a Mercedes. Then Mr. Lando Norris finishing halfway up the points in the last race of the season. Mm. Hey, yo. 
followed by Esteban Ocon, uh, Lance Stroll took eighth. Danny Rick in his last race takes points. Okay. And another one in his last race also took some points. Who's that? Sebastian Vettel. Ooh, that's true. Yes, yes, yes. So you had some retirements. You had Lewis Hamilton as a retirement. You had uh, Nicholas Gotifi. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's retirement. You had Fernando Alonso. Yeah, he's a retirement as well. I saw a great meme of who's going to Alpine. Is it Gasly? It's Pierre Gasly, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I saw a meme where it was Alonso um, talking to Gasly while he was in the car. And he's like, and sometimes it'll just blow up. <laughs> 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 a, a shit year for Alonso with how many DNFs he's had. I feel like that Alpine is the most unreliable car ever. I think you might be right. It's so bad. It's pretty bad. It's so bad. Yeah. So we did have some drivers like we just mentioned uh, bid a fond farewell. Mm-hmm. We had Mr. Latifi. He's gone. Goodbye. Uh, we had Mick Schumacher. He's also gone, which is kind of sad because he did have a few good races this year. Yes, he did. Uh, we had Danny Ricardo. Yeah, Believe Honey Badger. He will now be a backup driver at Red Bull. Yep, he has signed as a reserve driver with the Red Bull staff, which feels bad. Can man. can can we can we talk about that? Feels bad because. <laughs> Do, do you happen to remember where Daniel Ricciardo was five ish years ago? I remember. He was uh, fighting for wins, almost. You and, know, and in what car was that? Battling it out for the championship. Oh, that's right, a Red Bull. Oh, um, yeah, uh, okay. So, so, quick timeline of Daniel Ricciardo. He was battling for wins, a championship with Red Bull, top team. And then he decided he wanted to be the number one driver, so he went to Renault, I believe. Oof. Yeah, and then he said, well, I don't like this French team, so I'm going to go to McLaren, where I'm going to have an even better shot at an overall win. And he Eh, hardly got any points, and now he's going back to the team he was with before when he had a chance, and now he's going to have no chance because he's the only reserve dryer. Put the tail between your legs. Yikes. I feel bad because I love him to death. I do too. He's such a happy, fun-looking guy. Like I want to get a beer with him. Yeah, a great personality. Seems like a ball of fun to hang out with. But just the decision-making, very questionable. Because his leave from Red Bull was very unexpected. Mm -hmm. And he kind of had it made at Red Bull. And he just ousted. He didn't get along with Verstappen. Weird. Yeah. So, sad to see him not be a starting driver in F1 next year. Uh, But arguably the biggest uh, sad face... Comes from Sebastian Vettel, who uh, is leaving F1 for good. He is retiring. Yes, he is. Donke, Seb, Donke. I saw that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he is the meme master. Um, I am sad to see him go because he is hes one of those guys in the paddock that will say it how he sees it. Mm-hmm. I like I liked, I liked Vettel. Mm-hmm. A little bit too mm, political for me, but he I can. like him. He yeah. can get political, but he just says it how it is. Yeah. And I can respect that. Yeah, he's got his farewell donuts there. Mm-hmm. Which is tradition. Yeah. So sad to know that uh, he's gone. And, Indeed. Uh, I believe one of them that we did mention, Latifi, he was a Williams driver, right? Yes, he was. I believe there's some cool news for Williams with us here in the good old US of A. Yes. In the US of A, Logan Sargent. Sar- Sargent? Sargent. Yeah. Yep. Will race for Williams, and he will be taking the seat for Latifi. Yes! Let's go! So we'll have an American driver. Uh, he, I believe he's been in F2, mm-hmm. um, which is cool to see. And he got his super license points through F2, which is good. Uh, we'll see what happens. I, I don't know that much about him, to be honest. Do you? I don't either. We'll find out. I want him to win because I like America. I do too. But I want to see him winning in like... An American car, not a Williams. An Andretti, a ha- uh, Haas is not really American. A uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Haas in uh, quotes. Haas. <laughs> sure, it is uh, American-ish. 
Also, winning in a Haas is probably impossible. So, not gonna happen. Or no. well, Williams, frankly. Yeah, true. I'd like to see him in a Red Bull. That would be cool, but it's not an American car. So, there's. We just need Andretti to get in there. It's coming, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, cool to see an American driver though, and I'll be watching for how mm-hmm. he does next year. Agree, agree. Um, but uh, this has been a banner year for Red Bull and Max Verstappen. Yes, right? it has. So Max Verstappen and Red Bull actually broke a ton of records this year. What are those records that they might have broken? Yeah, it's worth mentioning this because the first record, Max Verstappen wins the most wins in one season. Ooh. He beat Michael Schumacher and Sebastian Vettel. Hmm. He had 15 wins in one season. Wow. That's a shit ton of wins, dude. Uh, Max Verstappen also got the most amount of points in a single championship. And he beat Schumacher for that one. So he dominated. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, whew, he absolutely destroyed it. Uh, Let's see. Then the next one that Max Verstappen, uh, also the record that he broke here, was the largest points deficit that was overturned to become champion. Because if you recall, the first like three races of the seasons, or two two or three races of the seasons, Red Bull was looking like shit. Mm-hmm. So he was down deep in the points. I remember that. So that was a big comeback. He also got another record for the most wins from the most different grid slots in a year. That's a random stat, but okay. It is a random stat, but yep. He also got the most wins in a season outside of pole position at nine of them. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's all of Max Verstappen's actual records. Let's move on to Red Bull's rec- records as a team. They got the most consecutive finishes in the top two, 19 of them. That's a wow. lot. Wow, that's a dominant team. The that is a for nineteen races. Dominant team. Jeez, oh, that's crazy. Uh, but yeah, that is the main one that Red Bull broke. But they did. They were close to some other records. The other records were biggest championship winning margin, which they were close. Uh, technically, hmm. the record is one hundred fifty-five points, but I believe that was before the uh, the, the points change. Mm-hmm. Uh, most wins in a year by a constructor. Again, that was close. 19 wins, 21 races for Mercedes back in 2016. Uh, and Red Bull won 17 of them. And then most wins in a year by a constructor. Uh, yeah, again, that was close to or most points in a year by a constructor. It was close. Huh. And the points was actually only by six points. So Red Bull absolutely dominated. Which, yeah, yeah. to be honest, I don't really like. No. It's kind of boring. I wanted to see... I, I really just wanted to see, like, some good, like, top of the of the grid battles. Give me a replay of last year. Yeah, sure. Just put it on loop. Sounds yep. great. Bring it down to the final lap of the final race. Sure, throw some steward shenanigans in there. <laughs> Fire the, the head <laughs> steward. I don't care. That sounds great. Yeah. That, it wasn't that this year. It was no. uh, Red Bull, Max Verstappen, run away. They had the championship locked up with four or five races remaining in the season, and it was just kind of boring. Which, again, is kind of pointless. Yet over here in America, we had people riding the wall <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the playoffs. Too much fun. Wild times. Too much fun. Yes. So that's going to wrap up my uh, my F1 news. Okay. Shall we get into some IMSA news? I would love to talk about IMSA, but yes, I think we're in the off season, right? We are. So most of the news now that we're out of most race seasons is going to be about driver changes and car changes and things like that. So there is a finalization of the Meyer Shank Racing Acura GTP lineup here. Okay. And it is finalized with a driver that goes by the name of Colin Braun. I've heard that name before. Yes. Would you have heard that name with a team called Core Autosport? Yes. Okay. Have you heard about Core Autosport? I have. What have you heard recently? Uh, I don't... What did I hear recently? I don't think it was You want me to tell you what you heard? Yeah. They're dead. Yeah. I was like, I don't think it was good news. Wasn't. Which really kind of sucks because Core has been a mainstay in IMSA 
since God. Oh, let's see. Since like back in the 2000, what, like 13, something like that? A long time. Yeah. They used to race Porsches. They, yep. they Core Autosports been around forever. What happened? I don't know exactly, but all I know is Core's done. Hmm. Core will not be, Core Autosport as a team will not be returning to LMP3 next year because they're gone. Okay. So that left Colin Braun looking for a seat. Mm -hmm. And he found a seat in the top class in GTP. Yeah. He is racing GTP for Acura. Okay. Yeah. So Colin Brown, yeah, he's rounded out the Meyer Shank Racing Acura GTP car. I know he's a very good driver, um, mm -hmm. and I know that that team was usually near the top in yeah. the divisions that they were in, in whatever mm -hmm. uh, class they were racing in. Uh, sad to see them go. I don't know. I don't recall why they're leaving. Um, I, off the top of my head, don't know. I know that there was a GT team that was like a purple livery or something like that that was having financial shenanigans going on with whoever was running the team. Uh, but that's a different story with the Flexbox team here. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'll do some digging to figure out what's going on here. But good to see that he found another car because I know he's a very quick driver. Yep. You ready to see who he's racing with? Sure. He's going to be with uh, Blomquist. He's going to be Elio Castroneves. Um, and then for the Rolex, they're also getting Simon Pagino to join him. Okay. Two IndyCar guys and then two sports car guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. It'll be good. Mm -hmm. Be good. Should so, be good. Yeah, it looks like Acura's getting tidied up, which means we're getting closer. Yes, we are. And every week you see a Porsche out at Sebring, Cadillac out at Daytona, mm -hmm. somebody's out at Mid Ohio. Somebody, all the teams are just testing, testing, testing right now mm -hmm. as we lead up toward the Rolex Twenty Four. So exciting! Mm -hmm. So excited! Says new top class. <gasps> Yes. So, uh, yeah, that's all the, the news I got. Now, there is, uh, with us being kind of between many race seasons, there's not a whole lot of racing coming up this weekend. No. The only racing that I could find that is worth mentioning is the FIA World Touring Car Cup. That is racing the race of Saudi Arabia at the Jeddah Corniche circuit. Hmm. Yep, that one. Probably won't be watching that <laughs> Probably not. But I guess there is racing on if you want to watch it. And Somewhere. You can also go to our website and you could watch at least 2021 and 2022 for a variety of series. Yes. 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 Go to weareauto.io, check it out, and uh, watch some of your favorite past races. So it's if you're free, all organized on the website, you can sign up and mark what you've watched off if you want. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome. Yeah. If you're itching to watch some racing. Check it out, because I know I'll be watching a lot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you got anything else? I do not. It's going to wrap us up then, episode 141. Thanks so much for watching and listening. If you're watching on YouTube, please leave us a thumbs up and a drop a comment on the video. Don't forget to hit subscribe while you're there. If you're listening on audio, please leave us a five-star rating and review on your platform of choice. Don't forget, while you got your phone in your hand, go ahead and follow us on social. Facebook is We Are Auto. YouTube is We Are Auto. Instagram is We Are Auto underscore. And our website is We Are Auto.io. So, thanks again. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.